However, it's possible that that problem is snake biting me right now. With the weather being what it is right now, I'm trying to get up the cab and sling your fuel filters just doesn't really appeal to me at the moment. Good morning, you guys. FSC Speed Shop. I just started the truck. It is the next morning. I just started the truck. I probably should have filmed it, but I didn't. But here's the problem we've been having. I managed to nurse it all the way over here, just off the turnpike. I had to get the permits changed so I could get off the road with this big fire truck. But anyway, I nursed it over here, and I'm going to try to change the fuel filters today. Either I'll have them do it over at the Bustleman shop, or I'll do it myself. I'm also close to a Caterpillar dealer, so if it winds up being an engine part problem, like a fuel pressure regulator, even a lift pump, I can go ahead and hopefully change that. Either I'll do it myself or most likely just pay them, but I don't know how busy they'll be, so we'll find out. Um, my problem is it's cold out, and I don't really like working in the cold, so uh, we'll just see what kind of day-to-day -day transpires into being. But there's our problem right there, is our fuel pressure gauge. Now I'm idling pretty high, the tachometer is not accurate. Now I'm idling pretty high, and it should be higher than that. And it's not even dithering, it's just kind of just stand still. But once you give it any kind of load, the pressure drops way down into the red to damn near nothing. And I had to nurse it last night, and that was the other thing too. One, I couldn't get off the Ohio toll road to do anything about it. So I had to nurse it all the way here to get on and off the Pennsylvania turnpike over at the uh, new stand. The hills I hit from Ohio line to here, let me turn that off. Some of them I was down to like literally 20 mile an hour to get up the hill. Could just had a downshift so low that what little bit of fuel you could get into the engine made enough power to get you up over the hill. And I'm grossing right about 80,000, maybe a little more. So, you know, that becomes a big problem. Didn't want to do that in the daytime with a lot of traffic, so I did it at night while there was very little traffic and I was more obvious to be seen with my flashers, the strobes, and everything. It's harder to miss something that's flashing uh, brightly going down the road. Once you top the hill, she would do her standard speed without a problem, but give her any throttle and she would just fall flat on her face. I tried my best to GoPro that yesterday, but eh, yeah, it was just a matter of just dealing with the truck. It, I don't know how well it'll come out, but we'll find out soon enough. Now while I'm waiting, I'll show you the other element we were dealing with last night also. Snow. We had a whole bunch of snow in spots. More in Ohio to Pennsylvania. A lot has melted since I parked here, but it all caked up on the front a little bit. Then all on the leading edge of the fire truck. That's just typical of winter this time of year. You get these little lake effect squalls come in and get you all nastied up. So I mean there you have it. I just put air to the trailer so that's airing up too so I figure I'd show you what I'm doing while we're waiting. So there's the Oshkosh Striker. Thanks for the hat guys. And uh, let's go get this fuel pressure problem solved. Man that's a cool wrecker but you're not here for me. Lord I hope not. Let's just look at it. Let's not need it. Man, that's enough to make you nervous when a wrecker shows up. You didn't even call him. I don't think we need that yet. How's it going? I'm going you. Hopefully you guys have some fuel filters for me and you can change them maybe. I got the part numbers if you need them. I have an old cab over Peterbilt, and uh, I'm having fuel pressure problems. It's highly probable my fuel filters are jammed. So I've got uh, the Caterpillar part numbers, so you can cross them to whatever you guys That's have. Fuel filters? Yeah. We should have them. Right. Well, I'll just give you the part number so you make sure you have them. Because if you could, I'll have you guys put them on for me. Uh, the one is it's a Caterpillar 1R. We huh? have one cat filter, and the other one we have to put a Baldwin on. That's fine. As long as they flow fuel, I'm happy. Because what I have now ain't working. 
And that might be a mechanical problem. I might leave here with the same damn problem, but. What's the name of the company? F-E-S, uh, FES, F-E-S, Z. What was it? F-E-S, Z, C-H. Victor? No, I'm just me. F-E-S what? F-E-S, Z. Z as in zebra? Yes. C-H-A-K. Change the T to a uh, C. Change what? Foxtrot, Echo, Sierra, Zulu, Charlie, Hotel, Alpha, Kilo. Yeah, I limped it in here with fuel pressure problems. Looking at that old KW tow truck over there, and I'm like, man, hope I don't need you. <laughs> it always makes you nervous when your truck's injured and they're circling, they're circling around you like, like buzzards on a dead, a dead dog or something. Do you know your USDOT number? I, no, off the top of my head, no. You can pull up the door number where you want it at, one or two. No. May as well pull up the two for you right now. Pull up the two so I can get your DOT number so I can look up an address. Okay, how wide are your doors? We got a 10 wide on the back. Probably have to do it outside. Alright. Pull up to the two? Yeah. Alright, cool. they were supposed to that's how my old 379 did and it really didn't drop off that terribly when I pulled away I don't think it was cold enough to freeze or to have any thing any water I don't like gelling up or something I just don't see that I suppose it's possible but no it just doesn't seem right either way it's not gonna cost a fortune to put two filters on it if, it is, if there is a freeze up problem that's freeing up now, then the filters will, will uh, solve it. I got about nine or 10,000 miles on the filters, so they shouldn't have failed, but it is within the range of it could failing. All right, here you go. You want me? All right. Yeah, that seems to make a lot more sense to working outside in the cold. Truck being cold is bad enough, right? Yep. Put your cab up. Oh, that's my most favorite part of the day.
good there? You good there? Was that? Unfortunately, no. I could lean it over to where she wants to go only one way, which actually seems to be what's wanting to do. All right. Yeah, usually I'll throw a strap for my fifth wheel over the headache rack and to the top. That's what I do at home. Or I just lay it over so far it can only go one way forward. But it's at where it's balanced. Yeah, I got on a toll road in Indiana because the permit won't let me off the toll road and that's where the trouble started. So I, it seemed to run good up until I was almost out of Ohio and actually the hills just stomped my ass last night. The first filter is a water separator filter. This is the line from the tank through the filter, then into the transfer pump, which is down below there then it comes through this filter and then into the injector pump housing. You guys have a way to cut the old filter open or no? Oh, okay. I guess we'll know once I turn the key and drive away then. It's either get back to trucking or go to Cleveland brothers and go let them fart with them get the engine fixed. you guys can see but this is the hose that goes returned back to the tank I think this regulator is in this elbow maybe I think the elbow the the regulator is in this elbow I'm thinking I don't really know that's my problem I don't know although that would make sense your input is here this is your in that's your out so I guess it'd be kind of like a fuel rail across I don't know, either that or the lift pump, which is down there, is bad. Or it's just plug filters. Time will tell. Sweet, sweet.
wonder how much that tow cost them from over there to over here. Where the hell is that smoke coming from? What was that some kind of fume or something or? Oh, it's air. Yeah. I say, I look at all that steam. I'm like, what is that fuel hot? Yeah, that was the other thing that was concerning me because yesterday when I got fuel, right before I got on toll road, I noticed when I was filling up, uh, it just seemed a little bit more mist or vapor was coming out of the fuel tank than normal. But I was really, really low, which could have also exacerbated the problem. You know, being in them tanks are not that much younger than me. Ironically, a week ago, I was talking to a guy, he had an issue where it was like every, every if he got 8,000 miles out of a set of filters, he had a B model cat also. And I got about nine or so on these. I've never had him fail that early, that's kind of weird. Want me to fire it up with the cab up so you, if it stumbles? If you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the door hyper extends. That's useful. And it's useful and it's also a detriment because the wind already stole it and cracked my corner glass. I can't see the gauge though, but... pump the primer to make sure I got all the air out. I had an E-model in a 99 peak. If you had like one little bit of air in there, it would fall on flat on its face. And not now, it would fall as you were halfway out the door. It's higher than what it was at an idle. That probably solved it. I hope so. Yeah, it was a snowing and a blowing. It was like, it went like that much snow, yeah. but like blizzard stuff. I'm like, man, I am not changing filters now. <laughs> My debt load don't have an appointment time, so it'll be a day later and I was planning. Screw it. It's too much like work. Such a stupid problem to have. I like to guide that hook in. There we go. Yeah. 
sweet. I think we got her. Alrighty. We'll pay the bill. That's not the bill, that's the bathroom. She shed, huh? Mm -hmm. It's your little hidey hole. <laughs> well, appreciate you being in your hidey hole because I'd have uh, more problems if you weren't. You know where we're at. Absolutely. Actually, I hate to say it, I forgot you were here. I looked on Google Maps. I'm like, man, there's a flying J. Maybe I can get filters. It was snowing and blowing. And I'm like, man, I'm not jacking up that cab in this kind of wind and the snow. We have our and then I see the shop here and I'm like, I'll just have them do it. <laughs> let you know which shop you're the closest to right yeah i usually don't need the outside shops but, hey, but usually you know, you know it's we're here if you need us i'll tell you it was funny i came in i walked outside to go get the truck uh -huh. and that that kenworth wrecker that old one was circling a lot and i'm like yeah. man what is this like vultures on a dead dog no he was uh, <laughs> him into the shop because i had to limp my crap in here and i'm like oh man what is this the harbinger of bad news no, Ken, Kenny is actually a really good guy. He, he's he's not, the, not the tow driver of death. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a fantastic guy. I mean, at least he can talk to you. And he's... Well, not for nothing. He owns a tow truck, and that crap ain't free. Yeah. You know, but yeah, still, I'm just like, like, I don't want to have to need him today. He tries to be fair. Yes. I mean, he'll... Oh, yeah. What year is that truck he's got, you know? 77, he said. 77. Okay, that's older than my 84. Well, I looked at it and I seen the old high beam switch on the floor yet. Yeah, I got that too. <laughs> Sweet. You your, your cab over? Yeah. Oh. Got like 9,000 miles on filters. They just went to hell on me. 